A bird called the bar-tailed godwit has the longest non-stop flight, migratory flight of 11,500 kilometers. It flies from Alaska to New Zealand non-stop. Now, what does that mean? And takes nine days and nights. I want you to put yourself in the, in, in, in the data. What does it mean? What does it mean to fly non-stop nine days and nights? It means the sun rises, the sun sets. The sun rises, the sun sets. The sun rises, the sun sets. The bird is flying. It means there is rain storms, the bird, of, the bird is flying. It means there are snow storms, the bird is flying. It means there are cities underneath, the bird is flying. It means there are oceans underneath, the bird is flying. It means there are deserts and forests underneath, the bird is flying. It means there is no food, no water. It doesn't eat, it doesn't drink, it doesn't sleep for nine days and nine nights. They have discovered that the brain of the bird of this bar-tailed godwit, half the brain sleeps and half the brain is awake. And after a few hours, this half sleeps and this half is awake. They have no idea how. And remember, this is a small bird. This is not an albatross coasting on 14 foot wingspans. It's not taking, it's, it's not, uh, taking advantage of thermals. It's beating its wings for 11,500 kilometers. Ajeeb, eh? That's the map of where, from where it goes to where, and that's a flat. If you look at, look at it on the globe, it's like that. We'll go to another bird. Bar-headed goose. Bar-headed geese take off from Alaska. They go straight up. They hit the jet stream current at 33,000 feet, and they go. And they hit the jet, they fly in the jet stream current for the same reason that your intercontinental airliners fly in the jet stream current to take advantage of the force of the wind, the fast flowing wind that circles the earth. Who taught the bar headed geese that there is the jet stream current? What about the jet, jet stream current? You know what about the jet stream current? The temperature in the jet stream is minus 59 degrees Celsius. Take the same bar-headed goose, say Bismillah Allahu Akbar, and put it in your freezer at minus 6, it freezes. The same bird flies at minus 59 degrees Celsius. The amount of oxygen at that, temp at that height is almost non-existent. And you know what they found? They say that bar-headed geese actually breathe more efficiently in low oxygen atmospheres. What are they saying? They are saying the bird breathes better when there is no air. Ajeeb, eh? What's the question to ask? Why? Why? If you were the creator of birds, where would you put their food? If you were the creator of fish, where would you put their food? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the food of birds, not aquatic birds. Birds which are not water birds, he put their food inside the water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the food of fish in the air. The arch of fish shoots down insects from trees and eats them. The kingfisher catches fish and the kingfisher cannot swim. My brothers and sisters, what's the question to ask? Why? Let me tell you the story of another bird. The ruby-throated hummingbird. Ajeeb, the khudrat of your and my rab. The ruby-throated hummingbird is a small little bird that size. The female is slightly bigger than the male and that weighs 4.5 grams. 4.5 grams, 1 teaspoon is 5 grams. So the bird is less than a teaspoon. It is smaller than a teaspoon. This bird is in, it lives in the forests of South America. 
In a previous incarnation, when I used to live in Guyana, I have seen this bird in the rainforest, Amazonian rainforest. It looks like a moth. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a moth because it buzzes, literally buzzes. It beats its wings at more than a thousand RPM. And it is the only bird which can actually fly backwards. So it flies upwards, backwards, up and down like that because it lives on nectar from flowers. So it puts its beak into the flower and drinks nectar and flies backwards out of the flower. Now, this bird migrates and it flies across the Gulf of Mexico. It migrates from South America to North America to the bank of the Mississippi River. Part of that migration, the whole migration route is 2,000 kilometers. Part of that migration route is across, is across clear across the Gulf of Mexico, a, a, a distance of 600 miles. It takes 26 hours to cover 600 miles. It's not a water bird. If it lands in the water, it becomes fish food. What is the meaning of saying it covers 600 miles in 26 hours? It means the sun has risen. This little bird that size is flying across the open ocean. Waves underneath, winds on top, little bird is flying. The sun has risen. The sun has, is at the zenith. The bird is flying. The sun is setting. The bird is flying. The sun has set pitch dark night. The bird is flying middle of the night. The bird is flying, does not lose direction, does not lose speed, does not lose energy, doesn't stop for food, doesn't stop for water. Sun rises again, two hours into the new day, the bird lands in the United States of America without a visa. <laughs> Little bird that size, think about that. Pitch dark night, this bird is flying. Who shows it direction? Who ensures that this bird continues to fly? Who ensures that its bird is held up in the air? Who ensures the bird is supported in its flight? Butterflies, purple crow butterflies in Taiwan in the winter, they migrate 400 kilometers. A butterfly flies 400 kilometers. How many of them? They measured them, 11,500 butterflies per minute cross the highway. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is azzaqudul quwwatil mateen? He cannot give food to that little bird in South America in the middle of the rainforest. He, has, he needs to make it migrate all the way up to the, to the bank of the Mississippi. He cannot feed the, the, the bar-tailed godwit in Alaska. He needs to send it down to New Zealand to eat. What do you think? So what's the question to ask? Why? And the answer is, so that we understand the tafsir of his kalam. Where he said, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِذٍ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّا إِلَّا الرَّحْمَنِ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٍ Pity on us that we teach the tafsir of the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if there is no creation. And pity on the atheistic scientists who research in the kainat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if there is no Allah. Pity on both of them. How many of the people, how many of our students who are reading this ayah, who are memorizing the Quran and reading Surah Al-Mulk, who are reading the tafsir of this ayah, how many of them know about the birds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created? They just say, who is it that holds the birds? Which bird? Name for me one bird. Tell me something about that bird. Zero. Zero. How will you be energized? How will you be electrified? If you don't have information about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. 